God is good, isn't he? All the time. And all the time, God is good. I don't think I can get a message uh, higher off the press than this one. You know, I know I had one one week on the back of the tide on the whole press. The Lord gave me this one at this morning. And I know you've heard about perfect love before. But, uh, you know, we hear something one time, and then we said ourselves, well, I've already heard that. And I, I wish I could just yell at you and scream at you and say, hey, just because you heard it one time doesn't mean you know it. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, gave me this message early this morning and it's called perfect love I didn't even go back into my notes because I knew I could find something on perfect love because we've preached about it we've talked about it and God told me last year he said tell the people I love them did you hear that God loves you Regardless of who you are, regardless of your color, regardless of what you think about yourself, God has already made up his mind and he loves you. And God is love. So whatever God's going to do in your life is going to come through love. And whenever God talks to you, it's going to be love. He's not going to fuss at you because he doesn't do that. He doesn't have to. And through the Holy Spirit, what he's going to give you is the truth. So, uh, I pray you hear me this morning. That's a little different. I'm going to check this over here. I've got it open where I want it to go. Perfect love. First John chapter 4. Verse 17. If you don't have a Bible and you don't own one, let me know. We'll buy you one. If you do have a Bible, you need to open it. Go with me. Follow me. I know we put it up on the screen. But I want you to have it everywhere you can get it. And yes, I think you should be making notes. And hello to all of those we have on Facebook, YouTube, whatever. First John chapter 4, verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. First John 4, 18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So you can know that God is love and still be fearful. Just because you've heard it one time or you've read it a few times doesn't mean you have a right. And God's already living in you if you're born again. But has perfect love had a chance to get rid of your fear? And has perfect love worked in you to the depth that God wants it to? When you run across heavy situations, bad circumstances such as that, and, and, and things like that, and what's your first thought? God, why am I going through this? How come you're doing this to me? He's not doing it to you. He 
He's not the one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He has come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. First John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Fear fails. I said fear fails. Love never fails. Fear is not equal to my faith. I see a lot of these things, you know, uh, uh, instead of fear, let's have faith. Well, if you walk in love and have faith, you won't have fear, or you shouldn't have fear. Fear has been dealt with by the love of God the Father. And if he's in you, he's already there to take care of the fear. <clears throat> There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that fear it is not made perfect in love. 2 Timothy 1 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Paul's talking to Timothy, and he says, at some point, I put my hands on you and prayed for you to be filled with the gifts of God, with the Holy Spirit, with the, with the second gift that God wants you to have, not only salvation, but, but the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm speaking in other tongues. And being a witness for Almighty God. And verse 2, 17, I'm sorry, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When fear had to leave you, God turned around and gave you power, love, and sound mind. So if I know I have God's power and his love and his sound mind, then I should not be walking around in fear. I shouldn't be afraid. I shouldn't let the birds be making a nest in my head and telling me how afraid of things I am. And I shouldn't be taking negative reports because they're not coming from God. Perfect love casts out that fear. Now, I want to read this again, 2 Timothy 1, 6, 7, and 8. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of his prisoners. But be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. So you may have some affliction. You may have some problems. But the gospel is working in you. Jesus never said we wouldn't have trouble. But he did say, I'll be with you in those times of trouble. And if God is love, then that love is with me in the times of trouble. Fear brings torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And you know if you're being tormented. Torment is extreme pain. So fear carries torment. Fear carries pain. You know, sometimes people will say to me, I've, I've just been in such pain. 
But they said all the, all the sickness was gone and the pain is still there. And sometimes you have to drive out pain by itself. Sometimes it's not hooked to a sickness or a disease. Amen? Amen. The meaning of torment is extreme pain, anguish of body and mind. How does torment use us? It brings pain, it brings anger, it brings violence, murder, screams, develops nervous conditions, causes riots, it stops love, peace, and joy. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So if the Holy Ghost has come into your life and brought salvation to you, and the Holy Ghost has come into your life and filled you with, with his power and the fire of Almighty God, then there should be a peaceful person there. But torment is still doing its work. <laughs> People love torment more than they do God. I resent that. Yeah, I can just hear that coming back to me. Torment can cause sickness in the body, stroke, heart condition, stress. Torment has the ability to be a noun or a verb, so it's an active thing. You know, a, a noun pretty much is stable, but the verb can move around and do whatever it wants to do, can So it can aggravate you all in it, all it wants to. Unless you see that the love that God has put in you is, is, is a perfect love. And you begin to drive out that fear and its torment. You know, there's some things that, that the Lord left for us to do. You know, we, a lot of times we're saying, you know, well, Lord, if you just come and help me, you know, and you already got the help of the Word, you already got the help of the blood, you already got the help of the Holy Spirit, and God's saying, you do it. You drive it out. You take authority over it. Yes. You do something with it. Get it out of your life. Put it under your feet where it belongs. Stay there. Herein is our love made perfect. So we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Well, this is the day of judgment. And I'm not sure I see a lot of boldness in the body of Christ. If we had some boldness, we'd be sharing the gospel. We'd be telling other people about the love of God. That's true, brother. As he is, so are we in this world. As he is right now, God is love. Perfect love cast out fear. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job. I'm afraid I won't have any work to do. I'm afraid of this and I'm afraid of that. Uh, you know, the, the shelves are bare at the grocery store, and I don't know where I'm going to get food from. God knows how to make food. They said there were thousands of train loads of food when he had to feed the children of Israel in the desert. I mean, compared to, you know, they, they said there were 600 men plus the women and the children. 600,000, excuse me. So I think that would equal a million. And God feeding them for 40 years. He hadn't run out of anything, has he? 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love does the casting out of the fear. Now, if I had a piece of paper, which I didn't bring up here with me, but, uh, you know, when, when fear was in my life, I had several times that I had to deal with it in my soul. That's what it looked like. Still blind. And that's the way that's the way it was imparted into my soul. In other words, it wasn't all done in one day, it wasn't all done at the same time. So there was a good friend of mine, and when he would come around, I'd say, I'm battling something again. What do you think it is? And he'd always, always go back to the spirit of fear. And finally I, I said to him, I said, uh, how come this keeps coming up? He said, because it's in different layers. And if you think about it, your soul has been in your body forever. So the first time you experienced fear, maybe you were six months old. Maybe you were still in your mother's womb. Maybe somebody tried to drown you and, and you were afraid of the water after that. I was so afraid of the water that I couldn't stay up in the deep side of the swimming pool. I would automatically just sink. Didn't want to play water volleyball. And, and they always seemed to put me on the deep end. I wouldn't say anything. But I drank so much pool water. <laughs> <laughs> and I would think, and one day the Lord told me, he says, that's what fear is doing to you. Mm -hmm. And I said, get it out. Mm -hmm. And he took some of it out. <laughs> what was ready to come out by the blood of the Lamb was, was gone. But finally one day, me and my friend worked on this and worked on this and got rid of the fear that had tormented me. And when he took care of the fear, he <coughs> took care of the torment. When we took care of the fear, we took care of the torment. I want to say that again. When we took care of the fear, we took care of the torment. Because if you're being tormented, it's harassment. It's constant. <coughs> And the birds are building nests in your mind to torment you. You know, the birds can fly over and give me thoughts, but I don't give them time to get in my brain. Not on purpose. Not where I'm sitting around thinking about, I'm going to get back at that one. You know, I'm never going to forgive that one. Oh, that's when they're building the nest. Or you sit there and you have self-pity for yourself. That's a form of torment. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Yes, you do. By the word of God that you've heard for how many years? You know you're not going to fall, you're not going to fail, you're not going to surrender to, to, to the enemy. Why do you keep saying those kind of things? Why you keep living with the fear? Because you're enjoying the torment. Put the games away. Turn the TV off. Go spend some time in there with the Lord and get that thing out of you. Spend an extra hour just in prayer. Well, I haven't done that. Well, maybe it's time for you to start to. The 17 attributes to love, all positive, and love never fails. Fear fails. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. But while you're turning there, turn to 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, 
I am become as a sounding brass and a tinkling tinkling cymbal. That's a form of torment. I've let go of the love of God and I'm being tormented, but I'll get out of it. Eventually I'll change. Well, it's time to change. You want God to go deeper in your heart, deeper in your life, deeper in your mind? It's time. And it's on you, not on God. Verse 2, 1 Corinthians 13. And though I, I, I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, have not love, I am nothing. Why? Because perfect love is casting out the fear. Fear operates in your life and, and leads you in a way that you're not supposed to go. Fear will put you to sleep in church. Uh oh. <laughs> Fear will make you hoard your money instead of give it. Fear will help you put God last instead of first. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and I have not charity, I profit. It profits me nothing, because I'm busy being tormented. <clears throat> See, that's what he's trying to tell you. That there's a separation here. But perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love never fails. It doesn't have the ability to stop being perfect. Now, I think there's 17 attributes. I counted them in there. I may be off one, or it may be 18 instead of 16, or whatever. All positive, because love never fails. And then Romans 4, 17, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness. That's the results of love. That's the results of Jesus taking your sin. There's no more quality of sin in you. The quality of God Almighty is in you. He's the one that loves you. He's the one that put himself in there. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's the exercise of your love for him. But before you ever exercise that love, he came and loved you. He found me, I didn't find him. And we think, well, he'll do some things for me, but he won't do everything for me. Yes, he will. He's got a plan and a purpose for you. He developed what he had for you before the foundations of the world. Before the world had a foundation, God Almighty decided what he wanted for you. Before you were formed in your mother's body, God Almighty called you and separated you unto himself and saw you by faith doing what he had planned for you. And Satan is trying to use torment and fear and persecution and especially angry, getting people angry and turning them away from God. And they're tormented constantly after that. Well, if you love me so much, why am I going through this? Because it's part of my love for you. And when you get to the other end of it, you're going to be stronger than what you were to start with. If you find your way to submit to Almighty God instead of the other things, God would be taking care of you more. If you find your way to, to just bow your knees to him, instead of fighting your own battles, God would be taking care of you more. That's not my notes. Romans 14, 17, did you find that? 
For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So when the Holy Ghost comes around you, he's, he's coming in love because that's what your righteousness is. God, God made you the righteousness of Christ. God said, I want you in my family. I want you on my side. I'm taking you out of the kingdom of darkness and I'm putting you into this kingdom of light. There's no torment in this kingdom of light. There's no fear in this kingdom of light. There's no failure in this kingdom of light. I'm giving you time, time to let it sink in. It's sinking in for me too. Verse 14, 18 of Romans. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. So if I allow the kingdom of God, see, you see, we're talking about the kingdom of God now. We're not talking about this world. We're not talking about what's here. We're talking about the kingdom of God taking care of you. Not only God, but God's kingdom taking care of you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things to be added unto you. And it's time you give up this fear. And it's time you stop letting the torment be there and making you <coughs> angry. And you turn around and, and you possess people, you control people by that anger, by that torment. And they haven't grown up enough to realize that's not coming from God. So I want to read this again. I'm going to try to get 17, 18 together. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. So as you just turn around and live in your righteousness and walk in love and, and develop the peace that God has for you, Jesus said before he died, my peace I leave with you. Come on. I mean, if he left the gift of peace with us, and there's a covenant of peace that God Almighty made back in, in Isaiah chapter 54, he says, my peace will never leave you. And why should I walk around tormenting? Why should I walk around with the enemy being able to do bang on me and, and knock on me? Well, God, I'm just dependent on you. No. No. The Lord's done what he's going to do. It's now time for you to do it. It's now time for you to use your authority. Who 10.19 I give you authority, he says, to tread on the serpents and the scorpions and over all the power. All the power of the enemy has got to be tread on and it's got to be under your feet. All the power of the enemy. He comes around talking lies of lack and telling you you're not going to make it and there's not enough for you. Well, God loves those people over there, but he don't care about you. Have you heard that one lately? <laughs> You're the wrong color. Heard that one lately? Now, I have a finally. You know, Paul, Paul puts things in the scriptures with purpose. And when he says finally, you need to look at it. You need to pay attention to it. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. 
And then he, then he says, be perfect. Uh, I'm still working on that. But he's telling you to be perfect. God the Father said the same thing to Abraham. Jesus quoted God the Father in Matthew and be perfect even as he is perfect. Be sincere. Uh, be honest. Uh, have some integrity. Uh, walk in the word. Don't have one face for church and another face for home. You're not two people. You're not schizophrenic. That lady took that stuff out of me years ago. And I was so thankful of her. She wouldn't leave me alone. I was in a counseling session. And she said, man, I haven't met anybody with as many personalities as you had. That was after she got them all out. Amen. That was an hour later. And I'm glad she was stubborn. She said, no, you're coming out of him. You're coming out of him. You're coming out of him. You get out. You get out. And these things are leaving you. And I told her, I said, don't you stop. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the same. Yes, and that's what you've got to become. The same all the time. Amen. You don't let anything torment you. You're not allowed in this house any longer, torment. Peter, you have to go. I've got perfect love. And God added to that when he took the fear out of us. Power, love, and a sound mind. I'm not losing my mind. I don't forget what I want to say. I'm not upset with you. It's just the way this is coming out of me. <laughs> Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Just live in peace. Come on. That's what he's asking you to do. That's what Paul's saying. Hey, instead of getting all upset about these things, just live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. I didn't write it. He wrote it. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Now, this message didn't start here. I've been working on something when Rob and Mary were here last week. And, and you, you know, you think, well, he just going to sit around and enjoy himself. Yeah. I enjoyed myself with the Lord. But he's talking. Look at Psalm 24. Hello. You, you, you want this thing that's going in that's going on in the college to come in this church. Then we got to make some changes. I said we, not just you. Psalm 24, verse 7. And you said, you really can't, can't skip to the first six verses because they all, they all apply to what's going on in verse 7. But lift up your heads, O you gates, and be, be lifted up, you age-abiding doors, that the king of glory may come in. Okay. And I've been crying out to God. I said, God, I want to know what the gates are. What's, what are the gates? I'll, I'll open every gate in my life to you, God. I want your glory. I, I, I don't want to uh, miss the king of glory. I want it. And I know I'm supposed to give it to other people. It's part of what I'm supposed to do constantly. When God sends me out, the glory just shows up. And I teach, I teach in the new church all the time, the, the blood, the fire, and the glory. 
And that's not by accident. That's what God said. Put it together that way. And when the people learn how to wash themselves in the blood, the glory comes. And we were in Pastor Michael's church on the other side of Moscow and for, for four days, and, and we did four or five or six more meetings, I don't remember. But the Holy Ghost stayed there once they got washed in the blood. The Holy Spirit just stayed in that church. And I don't want to be without God's glory. And I, personally, I think if perfect love casts out fear, it's because God, is, God has come. And God has put himself in you. And he's the glory. He's the magnificence. He's the majesty on high. And the fear can stay there and torment you because of him. But I can do what I want to do with my mind. I can play all the games I want with my mind. So can you, if you're honest. And you can meditate on crap and let it build a, build a roost, build a house up there. But he says something here in Psalm 24, Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, are you gates? I think your gates are your five senses. And you open yourself up to Satan, to people, to demonic, to darkness, through your five senses. And then you start playing around. They've been trying to work on me to get me to fall for several days now. And I just finally told them, I said, you go back where you came from because I'm not falling. And there's nothing wrong with my balance. I can balance myself on one leg. And I can change legs too, you know. And you're just not doing that to me. So you might as well get out of the house. Yes. And just leave. You know, and he'll try any little scheme he can to get you to agree with him. And once you agree with him, then you start inviting him in. And you start, he starts roosting up there. Strongholds is what we call it. Hello? You ready for me to leave? <laughs> You have those five senses. You know, I, I even, uh, I had a paper over here, and I may have left it in the back. Uh, there it is. Touch, taste, smell, seeing, hearing. Now that's the teaching I was developing. But God put this in front of me. God put this about perfect love in front of me. So hopefully we'll go into it next week, you know, and actually go through touch, taste, and all those things. Taste and see the Lord is good, you know, that's one of them. And, and uh, uh, who, who was it in John's Gospel? Uh, in, in chapter 20. Uh, one of the brothers wasn't there when Jesus came back. Thomas. Who? Thomas? Thomas. Thomas. Doubting Thomas. Thomas said. Yeah. Unless I can touch his touch his side. And I want to feel a hole in his hand. What's he going by? Two of his senses. I won't believe. Well, what do you believe? I mean, either God is perfect love or he's not. It's time for us to stop the fear. To stop all these other things that are undercurrent. And because we come to church, oh yeah, I'm doing fine. Leave me alone. I'm doing fine. Leave me alone. 
and we leave you alone. Because it wouldn't do any good to try to minister to you anyway because you won't let anybody in, including God. And see, I, th I think that's the five ways that we let the enemy back in is through those five senses. I mean, when I'm in my bedroom and I'm all alone and I got my, my stuff playing, you know, and I'm, I'm listening to praise music or, or I'm listening to the Bible and, and I've got all my stuff under my control, I can be peaceful. Isn't that nice? And I go walk out in my yard and I know my territory, and it's under the blood of Jesus, and I can be peaceful. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> Sounds like a broken record, doesn't it? But let, let somebody come in that's got a problem, and it's a different story. And when they leave, it's still a different story, because things get different. You don't know what they're just going in the house. One of the kids called. He's got a problem. Oh, like it's been here lately. You know, people just been dropping like flies and dying. I tell you. And uh, Pastor Glenn Clower, when he died, that, that wasn't easy for me. I wasn't ready to lose my friend. I told my wife, I said, I don't want to go to the graveyard. I didn't, I didn't want to go. Got to get on another service. <laughs> you know, you, you just develop certain friends that you can talk to and that, that, that minister to you and you minister to them and I am sharp as iron, you know, and, and those kind of things. Anyway. I had an uncle die yesterday, and, and uh, there's been seven of us, seven uncles. Mm -hmm. Only got one left. Mm -hmm. There's eight. And three aunts, or two aunts and a mama, and mama's gone, and one of the aunts is gone, and the other one's gone. The Lord had me minister to her, you know, and, and tell me some things that were going on. You, 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 you can hear the Lord, and, and you, he would go back into the, the family line. Well, when you've got these five senses where they belong, you can hear him. When he becomes a struggle for you to hear him, something's wrong with those five senses. Something's going on that shouldn't be going on. I'm, again, I'm not trying to put you back in bondage. I'm trying to get you to see. Okay? So, so what did he say over there? If I can find it again now. Uh, verse 7. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Okay. So if I look at the five senses, are, are they working right? Or am I letting anything in that wants to come in? I mean, I, I got to have some authority over this. I got authority over everything else. I watched a movie one night, Linda went to bed. And, and I thought it was going to be a, an easy movie. And, and I got into that thing and didn't want to get out of it. And I said, no, nah, you, you didn't need to be watching this. And I had trouble all night long after watching that movie. And I got down the next morning and I said, Lord, you got to forgive me. Please. And I've, I've learned some things, you know, about getting rid of this crap. Excuse me, but that's what it is. It's garbage. Yes, yes. And a lot of it comes through television and radios and books and magazines. You know, Facebook will put stuff on the side and the girl ain't got enough clothes on which she, she, she shouldn't be in that in the, in, on that page in the first place. 
So I got where I don't even want to go out on Facebook. I'm still a man, you know, that stuff is tempting. And then Satan would love to pull you back into pornography and all that garbage. No, thank you. But just so you see what, what's being said here. Lift up your head, O you gate. Okay, Lord, I lift myself up to you. Help me make sure all the gates are open. See, because I, I can close them. I can close them through him roosting in my brain and making strongholds. Hmm? Perfect love cast out fear. I am commanded to love people. It's the second commandment. And I have to work, not daily, but I have to work on loving other people who I don't think are living right. So there's a certain amount of judgment in there that maybe shouldn't be in there. Come on, you got to do the same thing. And it's easy for, for you to just say, nah, I, I'm just going to stay away from that. Okay. So then I developed my little click, and I got my sweethearts, you know, and, and those that I can live with. And I don't get that kind of loving at home, so I can get that kind of loving from them and just hanging out with them, and they love me. But Jesus said, what, what about... What about those that don't love you? What about them? How much time are you going to spend with them? <laughs> oh, Lord, you need to be quiet, Phil. <laughs> you need to surrender this message. I got to get those gates open. And I got to do it in the right way. Uh, your age abiding doors. Well, Revelation chapter 3, it says Jesus knocks at the door. And he's waiting for you to open it. Have you ever opened that door to him? Lord, come on in. Come on in. I got the door wide open. And Revelation chapter 4, he says, okay, I'll open the door to heaven. So the kingdom's open to me. Heaven's open to me. My God, I can't close it up with my five senses. I'm going back to him and I said, I, I'm opening everything to you. I don't want I don't want anything closed to you. Come on. And if there's any fear left in me, get it out, God. Get it out. Nobody's coming to torment me. Now I think there's a difference between torment. And God causing you to, to, to walk in the place where, where he has you. What I mean by that is there's times when, when he's doing things. And they're not always pleasant. They're not always easy. I don't, I don't like, uh, what do you call it, when you have to get in front of somebody and tell them what they're doing wrong. Huh? Yeah, I don't really like that. I'd, I'd much rather go in there and just love on them and, and make it a happy day and all that stuff. You know? <laughs> but confronting is necessary, especially if you're going to be any kind of a leader. Mm -hmm. All right, go to verse 8 on that. <coughs> point, point four. Go to 8, 9. Go down to there. 8. Yeah, who, who is the king of glory? Now, now look what he's saying. The, the, the Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Who is it? Showed himself to Joshua. Wasn't the Lord of glory. It was the Lord of hosts. But when he showed himself to Joshua, he said, 
And Joshua says, are you for us or for them? He just told Joshua the plan. He never said, yeah, I'm for you and not for them. He's for everybody. He was for all of them. Hello. All right. So we go to verse 9. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Yes, lift them up, you age abiding doors, that the king of glory may come in. All right? Ten. See, the king of glory wants to come in. My God. Go to ten. Who is the king of glory? Is that what he says? Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts, isn't it? When was when when has the Lord of hosts not been there? Anybody? As far as I can tell. From my studies, the Lord of hosts has always been there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. When when David fought with uh, Goliath, David told Goliath, to, "You come with a sword and a spear. I've come in the name of the Lord of hosts." And the Lord of hosts was backing up David. And the Lord of hosts is backing you up. And he says, my perfect love is cast out in fear. And he says, I'll take care of you in every situation. I'll take care of everything about you. Why don't you just slow down a little bit and enjoy the ride? And there was another preacher on TV that used that. That's where I got that from. But then verse 10. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Shiva. Now stop and think about that. Because in the New Testament, they talked about the demons and the prince of demons, and they would not have killed, not have taken the life of the Lord of glory. They never took the life of anybody. Jesus gave up his life. But they trying to put the light out. And the one behind the, the Lord of glory was the Lord of hosts. And who is he going to the cross for? And who is he dying for? Us. Uh, I'm having to say some things about anger. When, when I was so angry, I would go back and listen to my tapes. It was on cassette back then. And I couldn't listen to them because I could hear my anger coming out with my annoyance. Yeah, you ever notice that on, on TV? You ever notice that with other preachers? You, you can hear the anointing and you can hear what else is in their soul. Mm -hmm. Hello? Pay attention next time. Use your discernment. So what am I trying to say? Sometimes what you're not getting rid of is known to God and it's known to those that have discernment. And eventually God's going to work on you and bring it to the surface or he's already trying to bring it to the surface and you won't listen to him to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. I, I think the Lord is opening this up for us right now. And he's saying, start paying attention to what your senses are doing. Start paying attention to the lies of the enemy. Where he's trying to get through to you and harass you and torment you and 
persecute you. Because I've already given you the ability and the authority and the weapons to stop this. Stop these accusations. Stop this penalty against yourself. Y'all with me? All right. I don't know how to stop this other than to say, if you allow your five senses to be demonic, then the enemy is controlling you and not God. Jesus is the shepherd and the bishop of your soul, but he's looking for submission. Submission to authority, his authority. And you know, in Psalm 23, the, the very first verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, but then, then he says, uh, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the still waters. And I went to the Lord one day and I said, Lord, I've never allowed you to do that. I've never allowed you to, to, to make me lie down in the green pastures and leave me beside the still waters. When are you going to do it? I asked him that. Come on. And just a couple of days later, he came in my prayer time. And I knew what he was doing. And I said, oh, yeah, I like this. It was a sweet place to go with the Lord. Hello. Then he turns around and restores my soul. Then he leads me in paths of righteousness. He leads me twice. <coughs> and in that righteousness, I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's down here. That's not up in heaven. People have preached that. Oh, well, you've got to go through the shadow not up there, down here. There's no shadow of turning up there. God doesn't have one. He had to use Peter's shadow in order to get people healed. Oh, Lord. Father, I thank you for taking care of us. I thank you for healing us. All control. Come on, just stand up with me. May I pray over you today? Is that all right? I, I don't want you to lift your hands and say this, that, or the other is my problem. I just, I just feel like uh, Father, the way of love is what you have given us. And the tormentor is broken off of us right now. And I want you to agree with that. King of, King of glory, Lord of hosts, come and back us up today. Come, come and get in front of us and just clear out those things that have been making us uh, sick and tired and weary and, and all the other stuff that, that torments us. You got a hidden anger down there? Just, just command it to come out. Get out of me. That's about all it takes. Get out of me. Go from me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for my miracle in my body. Thank you, Lord, for the miracle in my soul. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Change me to your glory. Change me for, for what you want to do. Not for what I want, but for what you want. In the name of Jesus. All manner of you are driven out. In the name of Jesus. Anything that you have tried to make in our mind is driven out now in Jesus' name. And we are, we are healthy today. And Lord, we just put our five senses in your hand and ask you just to uh, cleanse them by the blood of the Lamb and make it all pure. Make it all pure. I 
not bring the power of youthful lust. And lust has to leave. Homosexuality has to go. See, these things are not always what you've been doing yourself, but what Satan is trying to attach to you. Hello? And he's not able to do it anymore. Because the blood of the Lamb is just washing this congregation today. Washing all of us clean. Yes, yes. Pure, holy, set apart for Almighty God. In the name of Jesus. That your health and your wealth and your prosperity come to us in Jesus Christ. We thank you, God. We have perfect love, and perfect love is driving out fear and torment and all the other things that Satan is trying to do in our lives. The doors are closed to you, Satan. But how many would say, I open all the doors, I open all the gates. Yes. To you, Thank Lord. You. Thank you, Father. I want to be an open vessel unto you. Yes. I want to receive your miracles for me and for the body of Christ. Yes. I want you to have me and be able to deal with me. And I submit myself to you and humble myself unto your mighty hand that you may be exalted in due time. That you will exalt me in due time. Treasure. You're God's treasure. And you just keep going with Him. You're just God's treasure. And you just keep going with Him. You are God's treasure. And you just keep going with Him. You don't stop. You just keep going. Faith works by love. So you begin to say what you want to say. And open your mouth to your faith. By faith, I have enough. By faith, I am the healed of the Lord. By faith, I walk in his crown and victory. By faith. See? But the faith works by love. And you activating that love makes that faith work more and more all the time. In Jesus' name. I expect you to be healed today. I expect you to be whole today. I expect you to walk away from hell with something new in your step that comes from God Almighty, from the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your blessing. You raise yourself, raise your hands and receive the blessing from the Lord. You're blessed coming in and you're blessed going out. I bless you in the city and in the field. God commands his blessings upon you this week. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine, shine, shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Yes. He shines on you because he, and he has grace for you because he takes you out from under the circumstances in the name of Jesus. And he lets your light shine, shine in the name of Jesus. He puts his, his presence on you in the confidence of, of, of the Holy Spirit. And he activates his peace. And there's nowhere that you go without peace. Amen? Yes. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.